Radio Valley 99.9 FM tune every time. Say ooh. ooh. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, good evening to you, in fact. Right. Um, it's been a while since I've uh, been on air uh, on 99.9 FM. Um, but it's a pleasure being back, particularly at a moment when it's... Uh, very important to be on air and spread the right information. I am extremely pleased, therefore, to have uh, in the studio with us uh, Dr. Pandup Singh, the Director General of the Department of uh, Medical uh, Services, who was here to clarify so many things that we need to clarify. Doctor, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Last. Now, Doctor, one of the reasons why we're here today is because we need to dispel some rumors we need to clarify we need to clear the air there's a lot of false information going out uh, about uh, covid 19 and the outbreak or whatever it is you know um so obviously we need to get to get the right information we need to have a sense of uh filtering the information that we're getting also particularly on social media um so right off the bat i think it's important for people to understand what is the situation here in bhutan can you elaborate on that okay i think anyway thank you radio valley for giving me this opportunity i think as we all know i think this uh, coronavirus outbreak has now it has started from a place called huan in china and uh, i think bhutan we had the first first case uh, and declared positive on 6th of this month la right so as of now, now for globally, I think today WHO has declared yes as a pandemic. pandemic la. Yes, la. So now when you say pandemic, means that means it has been spreading from country to country, and also there's local transmission. La. So when you say local transmission, means that initially all the cases were we had traveled from Wuhan in China. La. Right. But when we say local transmission, means that a, a positive case in one country is transmitting to other people in their own areas, like right. community. Just before we go further, Doctor, mm -hmm. just so that people don't get confused, we're not saying that there has been local transmission here in Bhutan, yeah. but no. we're saying it has happened it in other countries. Other right. Countries. Okay. That's why WHO has declared as a pandemic. Last. And for Bhutan, we have diagnosed the first case. I think everybody knows it was diagnosed in a tourist. And after that, we have contacted all the, traced down all the contacts, la. Within as soon as that result was uh, declared positive, within six hours we are able to you know, trace all the contacts la, of that tourist. La. Then we have immediately isolated them all in our quarantine facilities. La. Okay. So that is the immediate measure, and our qu uh, quarantine uh, measure is basically firstly to monitor the health of those people who are quarantined, mm -hmm. who has come in direct contact with the patient. Other thing also to ensure that they don't transmit the disease to the general population. La. La. So that we are able to do, and that is very important, la, that as soon as the uh, case is diagnosed, that contact tracing is very important. So we are able to do it within six hours. Mm -hmm. Then also put them everyone in quarantine. La. Nice. That is very important. So as of now, so we just have one positive case. La. Mm -hmm. And all the primary contacts who are in quarantine has been found to be negative. Mm -hmm. So I think that is the present situation. La. Right. Um, there's something <coughs> to be said also about uh, how viral this uh, disease is. A lot of people think that the minute you you know have contact with somebody uh, who is a positive case, you're definitely going to get it. But as we have seen from our case here with the tourist, uh, the guide, the driver, even his partner, the hotel staff, the airline staff, all have tested uh, negative. Um, it also, uh, I might as well share this information also. The resort that he stayed in uh, in Guwahati is owned by a friend of mine. And uh, I found out also that the staff over there have been quarantined and everybody has tested negative there as well. So I think that goes to show you that um, it's not as viral as we imagine it to be. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, could you clarify on that? Yeah. Actually, now, of course, in terms of sign symptoms, it is like any viral infection. Right. You have that cough, fever, throat pain and lower respiratory infections. And uh, in terms of transmission, they say that if you are within three feet, one meter mm -hmm. distance of that infected person and for about 14 minutes, 15 minutes. La, okay. If, at closeness, no? then right. you have high chances high of getting chances the disease. Loss. And also, I think if you see now, lots of uh, studies have been done over the past couple of months and we see that people who are elderly, 
who has got like elderly are more susceptible to you know, this coronavirus infection. And also in terms of if they have some comorbidity. Now comorbidity means now if somebody already has underlying disease, la, like for example, maybe they have heart disease or they may be having diabetes or high, uh, high blood pressure or cancer, you know, any uh, long-term diseases, if they're already having this kind of diseases, these people are more at risk of catching the coronavirus infection. Right. So we need to take extra care of the elderly, the elderly yes. and also of uh, the infirm, people who have uh, other diseases. Yes, yes. Um, also, uh, how about babies? La? No, actually, statistics show that it is infection is less in younger children ah. and also in females. La. Right, okay. That's interesting to note. That's new information. I didn't know that uh, at all. That's a global epidemic. And I mean, the epidemiology source like that. Last, last. All right. For those of you who tuned in late, uh, let me tell you that here on Radio Valley 99.9 FM, we're having the special program on uh, the COVID-19 uh, situation with uh, Dr. Pandup Singh, who is the Director General of the uh, Department of Medical Services. Now, Dr. Your involvement with uh, all of this is is quite personal and it's quite co- close as well, right? Mm-hmm. You are involved mostly in quarantine. Yeah. Right. Um, tell us, uh, just so that people understand, what happens if somebody who we think may be infected needs to be checked and is therefore placed in quarantine? How, how, what's the entire process? Actually, now, now just to see how the process started. La. Last. So we try to screen people. La. So we have a definition called suspect. Okay. Which suspect now we keep on changing. La. That's a terrible word to use, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so, a, 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 a suspect is a person, initially, like for example, whoever has signs, symptoms of this flu-like symptoms Lass. and has traveled to an affected country, smaller, or is coming from a affected countries and has or traveled to affected countries within the last 14 days. So in such cases, we usually you know, uh, take their samples for laboratory tests. La. Now, if that person is positive, mm-hmm. okay, la, then all these primary contacts, la, okay. that means who has come in contact with him, Close contacts, no la. Last. So all these people will be put on quarantine, la. Okay. So quarantine usually is uh, now basically quarantine is a facility. I think uh, when you say quarantine, we keep in a, a separate facility, la. Right. So where we usually basically this quarantine is done to firstly to monitor the health of this person. Okay. Who has come in contact with a positive case, no la. Last. And also to ensure that this person doesn't. Or spread the disease to the other community la. so these people under people on quarantine are kept inside uh, isolate i mean separate building or house more la. okay and their health is monitored so Last. like in for example now also we are quarantining people in some quarantine facilities so we have placed their our health workers who monitor the pace this their health basically for fever and a cough and Sign symptoms, lower respiratory infections, nice. as well as for any other you no know, health problems, lah. Okay. And we don't allow anybody to come in touch with these people who are quarantined, lah. Okay. That's why anything like, for example, food also how we are providing is that we are ordering packaged food, lah. Okay. So that uh, caterer places the food at the reception. Okay. Then our health worker or that ward boy who is posted there, they pick up this food and. Uh, Deliver to individual rooms, la. Right. And in terms of then, this uh, individual uh, quarantine people are required to take the food themselves. Mm-hmm. Then all these food items, whatever any waste, we have also provide them with special uh, plastic bags. They will collect. They will put the waste all in their room, la. Okay. Then our our ward boys or that uh, sweepers we have put in these places. They will collect the waste. Okay. And waste is taken to the incinerator. La. Ah, so incinerator. okay. So it's all incinerated. Yes. La. Right. Okay. So cool. then basically here what we want to ensure is that no one comes in contact with the quarantine people. La. Right. And even our health workers, we don't change. La. Okay. So we keep this identified health workers for 14 days. No, for 14 days we keep them in the thing. Last. So in quarantine place. Okay. So that uh, we don't expose so many of our health workers there. Like. Right. Okay. But no. they take the necessary precautions. Yes. Of course. So whenever they come in uh, contact, I mean come in touch with this, and you know, if they have to examine this patient and all that, I mean these quarantine people, so they uh, use full personal protective equipments. Like. Last. Okay. And, like gloves and masks Last. and all that. Like. So in a sense, even the the health workers there are more or less in quarantine, more or less. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right. So they're staying there. They don't yes. have uh, uh, access to their families. Yes. 
Um, I have to take my hat off to, to all of you people in the health sector. You've handled this so efficiently. And uh, obviously, the dedication that, that all of you have put into this and the seriousness with, with which you approach this, I, I, we, we need to take our hats off to that. Level. Absolutely. So just needed to get that uh, uh, out there. Also, uh, on the question of uh, false information, uh, doctor, um, there's quite a bit going around on social media. People are suspecting that the government's hiding information, um, that this uh, disease is actually much bigger than, than we think it is. You know, what sh how should any common, normal, ordinary person respond to information that's there on social media or w word of mouth as well? Actually, now, uh, to start with, la, I think it is also our moral responsibility to give very accurate information to our public. To exactly. Our public. Mm. It's very important. Mola. And of course, and our, like, for example, uh, we always base our information on WSO. La, right. World Health Organization, because there's this technical, you know, yes. body right. you know, where you know, all the health related you know, information, you know, they give the correct information. Right. So we always collect information from WSO. La. Right. So then, and in for Bhutan, so this uh, information is displayed on our Ministry of Health web page, Facebook, Twitter, and all that, and also in Prime Minister's office. La. So, as far as you know, we know that uh, there has been lots of you know, people, especially in the social media, that we are hiding information and all that. I think that's not true. La. Right. I think it is our moral responsibility because mm -hmm. whatever doing, we are doing to prevent, you no know, protect yes, the health yes. of our people. La. So, I think people should trust us mm -hmm. and also. And we have been also announcing now and then that please don't look any other information. Mm -hmm. The right information is what is we give in the our uh, official uh, social media page or our official website last. and other is Prime Minister Office. Website. Last, last. Let me just again, you know, for the sake of you out there who's listening right now, uh, if you're listening to information, word of mouth, uh, you know, that people are talking about or, or from uh, sources that are not credible, let me just tell you this much, that... It's reached a point right now, not necessarily because the disease is so dangerous, but because people are panicking, because it has become, in fact, an issue, a problem globally, um, that governments everywhere will not hide information. There is too much risk in that. See, the whole purpose behind sharing information, why you have a media, all of that, is so that when you have the right information, the right decisions can be taken. Now, it is in the interest of every government that their citizens take the right steps as well, which is why they will not give you misinformation, <coughs> they will not give you incorrect information. Whatever governments are sharing is true information. So please get your information from credible sources and don't listen to all the stuff. I, I know there are people out there who are um, uh, what do you what do you call them what's the what's the term anyway people who, who want to d believe bad news uh and we have conspiracy theorists as well um who believe that you know ah, right okay so one guy was infected here it was a tourist there is no way that his partner could not have been infected so she's definitely so government is hiding information the guide and all we don't see them because they're in quarantine of course we don't see them but but why are they locked up it's because they're infected you know, people mm. want to believe the worst things. And I think it's a normal human tendency yes, for us yes. to, to like bad news. I mean, uh, for example, if there's a, an accident uh, outside uh, this building over there, within no time, there'll be a crowd over there just to see what happened. Yes. People like bad news. Um, so that's a not normal human tendency. Yes. But I really think people need to curb that urge, you know, to, to, to believe yes. bad things. Yes. Um, and I'm not saying be blind. Yes, right. Yes. That's not what the Ministry of Health is saying either. You know, don't yes. be blind. Be careful. In fact, yes, yes. yeah, be a war, little worried, but don't panic. Yes, exactly. Right. And don't spread wrong information. Right. Yes. yes, yes. Uh, am I correct yes, so far? Yes. I, I would seriously uh, uh, say not because I feel that way, but really it's just a sensible thing to do. Mola. Mm -hmm. Right. OK. Um, now, uh, as far as traveling goes, um, if people need to absolutely have to travel, uh, to some other countries, then what what should they do? La? Now, I think because with this global spread more, la, many countries are putting in travel restrictions, mm -hmm. visa restrictions. La. So I think it's important for people to take advice from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Royal Government of Bhutan, right. you know, for any travel advisory. La. But it will keep on changing every day. More, so I think before traveling and before making travel plans, I think it's important they consult the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Last. Able to, and 
other advice from the Ministry of Health is, I think, as far as possible, I think it is better to avoid unnecessary travel. Right, right, right. Yeah. If you don't absolutely need to travel, then don't travel. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, I just got back from Delhi about, oh, what, about 10, 11 days ago, I think. Um, and at that point, the, we didn't have the outbreak. So, and of course, I was taking precautions as well. But then, you know, it got me thinking that, Really, if you didn't need to go there, why go there? But of course, it was a professional uh, thing. I had to go there. Uh, okay. Uh, so if you're traveling, you're saying, doctor, please inform the foreign ministry. I mean, take advice from the foreign take ministry. Take advice. Uh, And okay. second is, as far as possible, avoid unnecessary travel. Right. But there is no restriction whatsoever on travel within the country, right? No, no, no. no. Right. Um, I know that some people are thinking that there may be restrictions, but why is there no restriction? Now, actually, now as of now, we have only one positive case. La, right. We have been already isolated. And we have uh, taken, I mean, contacted all the primary first contact. Mola. All the contacts, we have already quarantined them. La. So, there's so there's no other positive cases. No, there's, That's why there's no restriction. Like, for example, in Thimpu, that patient is kept in the hospital. Mola. So, somebody traveling from uh, Paro to Thimpu will, will have no risk. Right. And, and also now... Somebody uh, traveling from Thimpu to uh, Wangdi Bhutan has no chance of transmitting the disease, no? Right. So, but this will change if there is local transmission. Like. If there is local, yes, transmission, local transmission, right. That means if there are more cases in, mm-hmm. you know, in Thimpu or in the country, in some mm-hmm. districts, probably our strategy and intervention will change. Like. Last, okay. Um, then there are people, let's say tourists and guides, who are getting a little stigmatized, I believe, in, in rural places. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. What do you say about that? Like? Yeah, actually, yeah, we also read in uh, uh, the newspapers that in some places tourists were stigmatized or even the tourist guides were, I mean, you no, know, some were told that, oh, coronavirus is coming, mm. something like this. I think it's not good, especially we are known for our, what to say, hospitality. Yes, more, yes. Like, good behavior and all that. So I think it's, It should not, no, people should not stigmatize. I mean, it is also ethically wrong. La. Right, If right. If somebody is sick, right. because now coronavirus is like any other viral disease. La. Just because somebody has this uh, disease, even if they have this disease, I think it's not good to stigmatize because it is ethically wrong, I think. Right, right. So and also as Bhutanese, la, I think we should not, because that will give a bad impression to the, because, no, I mean, foreigners, I think they will, They have been always taking back good memories from Bhutanese. Right, la. right. No, good image of Bhutanese. La. And we see that they give very good you know, feedbacks on how you know, people behave in the country. So the few incidents may you know, give a negative image of our country, right. of our people. La. Right. Let's just put it into perspective in any case. It's not the end of the world, Nola. I yes. mean, we need to think beyond that also. This yes. coronavirus, we've had SARS, we've had MERS, we've had uh, Ebola, we've had all sorts of uh, outbreaks uh, over the years. We've handled everything. This, this, uh, in this good day and age, we've been able to handle more or less everything. Um, this, I feel this, this COVID-19 will, will pass as well. Yeah. Um, eventually, we'll have a vaccine for it or whatever, you know. Uh, we need to think beyond that as well. At the same time, we need to think about what's now, what's current, what's happening here. Don't forget to live, yes. to live as decent human beings. Uh, just because you hear about a virus somewhere, doesn't mean you throw away all of your values and suddenly you stop becoming a human being. No, no. I mean, in fact, the way I see it right now, I'm staying most of the time at home. Um, I'm getting to do all the things that I didn't have time to do before. You know, so it's been fun. I'm getting to spend time with my family. these positives that, that are coming out. Uh, some music that I totally lost touch with. Uh, you know, it's been like 20, 30 years since I heard those songs. I'm reconnecting with that music. Um, I'm discovering new music. It's, it's, it's actually, there's so many positives out of this. And the good thing again also is that this is giving us a chance to, to actually band together. Uh, there's so many people who are coming out, uh, you know, and helping each other uh, as well. Today, you will find um, Desups. distributing hand sanitizers, um, at least the liquid, right? Uh, and, uh, oh, on that note, I need to just make an announcement that, look, if you want to get the, the, the sanitizers um, or if you want to help 
in the distribution of sanitizers. Uh, one way you can do it is any bottles, um, you know, like your Red Bull bottle or in you know, a medicine bottle. Uh, I have this little spray bottle over here, you know, about 100 uh, ml uh, around that size uh, or even maybe a small mineral water bottle. One place you can drop it is just outside shopper's store here above the RICB colony. Uh, and the day subs will pick it up on a regular basis. Every day they will pick it up because they're going to be, distribute hand sanitizers in those containers. <coughs> Don't drop big pet bottles like uh, um, 500 ml uh, and uh, one liter and all that. Don't because they're trying to distribute uh, at 100 ml. So it doesn't make sense to have a big bottle with just a little uh, uh, amount of uh, hand sanitizer. There. So please... If you have bottles that you want to donate, just outside the uh, shopper store, you can do that. Uh, Radio Valley will pick it up, uh, or the Day Soups, uh, uh, Tsukisumo, I'm told, uh, well, Chukisumo uh, will pick it up herself as well. Uh, so, uh, as far as the bottles go. But then again, doctor, coming back to the issue of uh, hand sanitizers, uh, <laughs> the people who are drinking the hand sanitizers. Yeah, actually, that's what we heard because I think there's some miscommunication la, because when these people were distributing hand sanitizers, they thought maybe, and, and also when we're advocating about use of hand sanitizers, la, I think people thought it is a medicine for no right. coronavirus. I think they right. are drinking. Right. So we advise people that because it is risky to, it is poisonous if mm-hmm. they drink. La. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I think some hospitals, even in the district, I was told that they got some patients who had drank this hand sanitizer. Right. The many, many mm-hmm. said no, but then they think it's yeah. it's uh, a, a medicine to be ingested, yeah. and then they're drinking it. So please don't do that. Don't drink your the the hand sanitizers that are being distributed. Um, that's not how you use it. Also. Um, What's the situation like at the hospitals? Are people coming for regular treatments that, you know, for other diseases? Um, I hear that straight after the initial announcement of the first uh, uh, patient, suddenly the hospital went empty. Yeah, actually, <coughs> no. As soon as the, I think the, the announcement was made about the first case in Bhutan, I think not only, even the hospital, I think it's still super empty. Last. I think the last moment the people, and from the hospitals, we are told, especially the National Health Hospital in Thimpu, so we are told that no, patients, people are not coming mm-hmm. to the hospital, you know, but we want to advise, la, normal services will continue, you know, and also, like, for example, now somebody may be diabetes, somebody may be high, high blood pressure or other illnesses, I think normal uh, services we are continuing to give, la. Right. So people should come to the hospital for these normal services, and also now, maybe people are worried about the risk of contacting this, you know, mm-hmm. in, uh, coronavirus infection in case there is anybody more. La. Mm-hmm. But for that, in throughout the country, la, mm-hmm. under each health centers, we have uh, established a flu clinic. Right. So where people with flu-like symptoms right. are diverted to go. La. Right. So there, so so all flu-like symptoms, they go to this uh, right. flu clinic. La. Okay. So that way, there's no chance of mixing people with flu-like symptoms with the general OPD patients. La. Right, right. And so we want to ask people that our services for general no, medical services is continuing and they should avail it because now one way we are, they are trying to provide and, and protect themselves from uh, coronavirus other way maybe they are uh, what to say uh, their own health no, right. com- compromising right. other diseases la. this should not happen exactly and th- this is what i i have a problem with la. i mean yes be concerned yeah. absolutely be concerned take the necessary precautions but don't forget to live you know the fear of dying which is even which is very remote from COVID-19 at least that should not affect you in such a way that you forget to live right yes. so yes if you have other illnesses that need proper medication and treatment don't stop going to the hospital as you're pointing out doctor there are field flu clinics which are separate from the general hospitals so all people with flu-like symptoms are going to those flu uh, clinics they're not going to the hospital um, so the hospital is still a very relatively safe place. Um, in any case, on a normal day, perhaps if this COVID-19 had not taken place, the minute you go to the hospital where there's so many sick people, in any case, you're exposing yourself to, to the chance of many infections yeah. as it is, <laughs> not just COVID-19. There's so many other infections as well. Um, so it doesn't make sense. If you've been going there for regular treatment on whatever it is, go, do it. Well, is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Right, okay. Last. So, health services are continuing Continue. as normal. And we as, would like to continue. Yes, last. So, 
don't forget to live basically <laughs> and take care of yourself more last then dr fandi on the uh, issue of uh, individual responsibility right now i think it's a very important that people understand what are some of the the uh, good behavioral uh, things they should be doing um perhaps you could uh, enlighten us on that no first important thing is i think hand washing lah right so we have been advocating that encouraging people to continue hand wash lah right hand washing is okay not only for corona virus i think it is a uh, you no know, one way a very cost effective you know intervention to reduce many communicable diseases mm-hmm. so hand washing should continue lah not right. only for corona virus but yes. any other communicable yeah. disease so mm. we encourage people to continue to hand wash lah and especially for this uh, corona virus other is i think social distancing lah as far as possible i think it's not good to as far as possible to try to avoid this uh, crowded places right okay lah now of course now uh, because that today we have only one case right. and there's no local no local transmission and once this of course we are telling not telling that okay you no know, completely avoid all the crowded places and mm-hmm. that more but i mean we have not really restricted but mm-hmm. we are telling try to avoid right right okay, try to avoid but if the situation worsens and probably we may you know come up with a more stricter you no know, stricter uh, what to say measures measures yes. telling that okay no more no, mm-hmm. no absolutely no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we have uh, a local outbreak yes, and there's right. local transmission, then obviously we will step into the red zone, yes, right? Yes. Like from orange, we step into red zone. Yes. Then obviously the measures, everything changes, the yes. approach, everything changes. Um, I think there is quite a bit to learn from the experience of other countries, Mushla. I mean, we hear already now that most of the hospitals uh, in China are shutting down now, um, and that's a good sign. Um, we hear that although yes in other countries it is spreading italy is in lockdown but they're dealing with it yes. uh, because they're in the red zone they're dealing with it uh, similarly we find that many countries have taken very proactive steps they everybody's taking it seriously and one way to ensure a successful uh, response to the covid-19 outbreak is for people to get involved more and that is why we here that is why you and i are sitting here in this radio station right now trying to dispel the right information trying to help uh, people it's important that you take your individual responsibility seriously also mushla no need to panic of course we're saying so if you must if you really need to get out you're going crazy at home by staying at home all the time you need to get out be with your friends go yes. right but as far as possible try to avoid places of congregation yes. and uh, yeah um also um How about the issue of wearing masks? Now, uh, I think when initially we announced people were rushing for masks. Lah. Last. Now, just for information, I think just wearing masks doesn't protect you from... Right. No, actually, mm. masks should be worn if you are suffering from... Right, so that you or, don't spread it. Yes, mm. or you, you are in, coming in close contact with a person who okay. is infected with coronavirus. Lah. Okay. So, basically, but normally... Other time, actually, it's not really necessary, you know, to right. put mask. La. Right, okay. So, unless uh, you are suffering from, you know, flu-like symptoms mm-hmm. so that you don't spread to others, mm-hmm. or you come in close contact with mm-hmm. a person who has flu-like symptoms. Right. In such cases, I think it's advisable to wear a mask. La. Right. Um, it's it's funny. You know, let me just put it into into context now here. I think the bigger problem here right now in the world today is not so much... covid-19 the disease itself but it's the fear yes. of uh, covid-19 that's that, that's why we're here right now exactly. i mean if you look at it um how many people are dying globally from covid-19 if you break it down statistically it's yeah, yeah. you can count on the one hand possibly exactly. four five six maybe at the most uh, a day diabetes is killing thousands every day cancer is killing thousands and thousands every day So you're staying home, you're avoiding people, you're spreading false information, you're alarmed, all of that, but you're smoking. I mean, it's yes, yes, it's funny, no lah. I yes. mean, um, statistically, you stand a greater chance of dying from cancer than from COVID-19, <laughs> and, and it's the sense of panic, I think, and fear that's uh, probably the bigger problem than uh, the disease itself. Yes. Would you agree, lah? Yes, exactly. True. All right. So I think right now we need to calm down. Of course, be concerned. Absolutely, yes, exactly. be concerned. Yes, yes. Right, but don't panic. Exactly. Mushla. Yes. Um, I recently saw a video 
where obviously people are hoarding uh, on stuff. So I saw recently saw a video, not in Bhutan, elsewhere, where a, a group of people, a family obviously, they're in a, a, a supermarket. They've taken a huge pile of toilet rolls, la, toilet paper. And there's this one woman out there who's saying, I need just one. Then they take everything that's in the store. And these people don't want to share with that woman. They, they, they don't want to give, give her that, uh, you know, they have more than they need for over a year also, but they still don't want to share. And there's actually a fight, you know, they, they actually engage in a physical tussle over there. I don't think we need to have something like that over here, no, no. because that's, yeah. that's what it can lead to. Yes, and we yes. certainly don't need that. Yes, yes, so the problem is the fear more than the disease. Last. Yeah, yes, exactly. That's true. La. Last. So I think people should, the normal, normal uh, life should continue. La. Right, yeah. Normal activities should continue. Mm-hmm. But they should take precautions. Take precautions, yes. Um, you know, one thing that I do is I, I have this, uh, I'm fortunate, you know, because I had this alcohol spray with me. I've had it for about uh, two years. I haven't used it much. Uh, I've, uh, somehow it ended up with me. Today it's coming quite a use. Like, so if I go into a taxi, for example, I'll, I'll spray the, the, the door handle and I'll spray the window uh, button as well. And then possibly I'll, I'll use it. And then when I leave also, I'll spray it and then I'll, uh, I'll move on. Is, is that yeah, good yeah, behavior? I think that's good. Good, <laughs> good, good. I seem to be an example, a shining example. No, no. Uh, no, but yeah, just be sensible, right? Yeah. The end message is be sensible. Uh, and as our very good friend here in Radio Valley, uh, Ganchu, often says, don't panic. It's organic. Moshla. <laughs> 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 Last, uh, doctor, thank you so much for coming over here. Is there anything else uh, besides what we've talked about that you might want to share? Okay, and I think as a no conclusion, maybe I like to say that we are taking all effort Last. You know, to ensure that our people are safe. Right. Basically, whatever precautions we are, whatever uh, things we have put in place, you no, know, this is all to do. You know, to protect the health of our people, Bhutanese people. Mula. Right. So, with that, I think everybody should, you know, cooperate and don't panic. Mm. And also, everybody be responsible. Right. Okay, la. So, I think uh, that is all I have to say. Last. Also, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Ah, la. It's our moral responsibility to, to do this. Uh, and it's our pleasure as well. Uh, we need a semblance of sanity in this uh, society uh, before people start going crazy with all the misinformation out there. Uh, yeah, so I, I also need to put this out there. Yeah, some of you are watching Hollywood movies or whatever, movies from anywhere about, you know, viral outbreaks. You're having apocalyptic visions of this world coming to an end and, and all that. Please calm down. Movies are movies. Let movies be movies. This is real life. Let's just be sensible, handle things uh, properly, prudently and considerately let's not forget to be people let's not forget to care for each other let's not forget to live on that note thank you very much doctor for joining us uh, here on radio valley 99.9 fm and it's a wrap here um and here on radio valley we will be sharing whatever information of course whatever information we do share here on this channel as well as uh, on our social media pages will be corroborated by health officials or people in the know uh, we're not going to be shooting our mouths off uh, just randomly as well. So just look out for those uh, transmissions as well. Um, not COVID-19 transmissions, <laughs> not viral transmissions, but information transmissions. Thank you very much uh, and uh, stay safe um, and don't forget to live. Alrighty, I, I know we ended the show a while ago, but I just thought I needed to make uh, an addendum, add this little message that it is so encouraging to see so many of you out there willing to help, whether it's in Pinsling or Paro or Punaka or Tashigang or, you know, Timpu, wherever it is, there's so many people who, who have come forward, you know, when uh, Desu people are working, you're offering them uh, refreshments. Uh, some of you have made uh, hand washing posts. I mean, I mean, stations, hand washing stations. So you have water and soap uh, outside your shops so that people can wash their hands. Um, some of you are actively involved along with the, with the day soaps in distributing uh, hand sanitizers. Uh, there's a lot of good things going around and some of you on social media are sharing some very positive messages, looking at the brighter side of things and helping people to deal with this and helping to de-stress the atmosphere. I need to put my hands together and thank all of you. Above all, I think I've said this 10,000 times before, we are so lucky in this country to 
be born here in a country where our monarchs take a very, very, very personal interest in everything that affects the citizens and the kind of leadership we have enjoyed, not only from His Majesty the King, but from members of the royal family and from the political establishment as well, the, from beginning with the prime minister to health officials. All of you have do, are doing such an outstanding job. I think it is important for all of us to feel a sense of gratitude as well and to feel a sense of relief that there are people up there in the decision-making positions who are helping out, who are taking the right decisions, who are extremely interested in doing things the right way and who are extremely concerned about our welfare, genuinely concerned about our welfare and our well-being. And there are people amongst ourselves as well who are taking these initiatives. Thank you so much. Thank you all and stay safe.